And again, it goes back to our attention principle. If you give that behavior attention, you're going to see more of it. Well, I had several experiences of working with um, various languages and multicultural groups and interpreters. Akil, is, is there a word for praise in yeah. Amharic? These were fascinating groups. They were a lot of fun. They were very challenging because in the instance when I was working with Sadia, I think there were three or four languages. They're sort of having difficulty translating it into Tigranian. You really relied on your interpreter to let you know what was going on. They were your voice and they were the voice of the parents. It was very important to have trust and have interpreters that were connecting with the families. The first few sessions I was struck because the parents didn't seem to understand play. And I remember one of our, our grandmothers said, you know, she had raised her children in Africa and she never played with her children. She'd just send them out for the day and then they would come home during the evening, you know, for dinner. So playing was completely foreign to her. At the beginning, yes, there was some um, resistance to those. Like, I beat my child, I was beaten when I was a baby and I listened because I was afraid and, and that was fine. So we slowed the pace down. We did several more sessions on child-directed play and coaching and help the parents understand the value of this in terms of the relationship with their children and then how to really do it and do it well so that their children and the parents were benefiting from it. You could just say, turned it around, oh wow, nice phrase. I feel what they're coming from and I know what exactly that is. It's the same for me too. And I'm trying to take my role and say, okay, yes, that's what we do. Can we try this? And I think we focus on trying it instead of forcing it, and that's what works better. We were telling them, okay, today, s go play with your grandchild or your child at home and praise them and see what happens. The more they do it, the more they get into it. I use the listening skills. I will listen to my kids and what they're saying. I try to respond to that. Oh, okay. I ignore it when something that I don't want to respond to and I don't want to see. When there are some good things that I see, I praise it. And I, until this day, I follow it with all my, of my children and uh, it really works for me. You want to play with me? Involving them in the play, in the activities. I sit with them, we play, we have a family night that we do games and board games and and even reading times, we sit down together and do reading times. You know, all your colors, give me five. Good job, boy. And those are ideas that we got, I got from the incredible years. That was, was really helpful to me. Tamika and Jim, now you know you're not supposed to hit each other. You're going to have to do a timeout. I've noticed um, significant change in each of the parents through each of the groups. And it's something that's always asked for during in our enrollment as about um, ways to discipline children and how to make their child successful in school. And I feel that the parenting classes really tie all that in together through the sessions. And it's great to get the parents together and get them talking among one another. It really helps throughout the year for some of our other Head Start work that we're doing with parents. One of the surprising things to me was the fact that they would be so committed because it seems like such a long time to ask them in the beginning to spend 12, the next 12 weeks with you. That seems like such a long period of time. But in all cases, um, we've, I've lost very few parents. Once they've gotten started, they really enjoy it and they really bond together and they're talking among each other and they're offering support to one another and that's always great to see. We're finding that those parents are more involved in school. You know, they're more apt to join the PTA, they're more apt to try and bring their new learning to other people and stuff like that. And it's funny to listen to the language change. Some of the parents that really didn't have a lot of skills in communicating with their child or were always, you know, thinking that they had to be the disciplinarian and that um, they couldn't form relationships with their child, a young child. By the end of the 12 weeks, um, that tone has kind of changed, so. 
that's always nice to see. How about with Aaron? Did you try? The content of the Incredible Years program that I think is particularly relevant to this population are the coaching pieces. Perfect. Lots of um, families when they first come in, they want to know just what to do to discipline their kids and, and those kinds of things. And so we talk about sort of um, the idea of kids have to have replacement behaviors, right, um, before we can, you know, take away the, the behaviors that they're doing now. Um, and that oftentimes in their homes these replacement behaviors have not been taught. And so how important that coaching is um, and what behaviors parents are paying attention to when they're coaching. Wow, dogs and cats. And a cat. I use the coaching and the language at reading times. This is very flat, fluffy leaf, and it's cabbage. Can you say cabbage? Cabbage. I always say the, the picture in my language, and then we'll say it again in English. And so we were put in both languages. This is a circle green avocado. And usually when we have the, the books that have uh, pictures on it, we just talk about the pictures. Oh, and it's a circle. Good job.